Hey guys, I'm just back from the show of shows. I needed a day off because first of all, I've been standing on concrete floor for about three days talking 12 hours a day. I actually came home hoarse, but my voice is back so I'm ready to do a video. I'm just gonna do a quick video because I have a lot of footage from the show and I wanna put that all together into a nice video, show you some of the things that we brought back, tell you a little bit about the party. So stay tuned, I'm gonna get that one out in the next day or two. But this quick one is we solved another mystery. Now, if you watch my channel, make sure you like and subscribe to my channel. You can go back to we solved a mystery and that was a Walther PP that was found in the Channel Islands and it had the markings removed. Well, here, here's the background. Damien from the Channel Islands uh, wrote to me and said, I'm the owner of the military museum in the Channel Islands and we found this Walther PP. Unfortunately, the front strap is ground off. Can you tell me uh, what was engraved here or what was written here before they ground it off? And I thought, well, there's some possibilities, but let me go to my database and see what we can find and thus look for buried treasure. So in searching through my database, I was able to find a whole group of SA group mittas all in a row, and this one fell right into that range. Therefore, I knew that the marking had been SA group mitta, and it would have looked like this, and somebody ground it off. Now, one of the most common questions I got on that particular video, and by the way, there is a link below if you wanna watch the whole uh, video from before, but the most common question that I got was, why would anybody grind off that marking? Well, it may be hard to understand destruction of history today through today's lens, but back then there was a lot of denazification mostly in Germany. They were required, anything that had a swastika on it had to be destroyed, blotted over. I had party leader grips, I've seen party leader grips and bought them where the, the uh, eagle with the little swastika underneath, somebody just burned it and got rid of the uh, swastika. In this case, any SS markings or SA markings were destroyed and that happened actually quite often, which leads me to the setup to this video. About a week before I left for the show, one of our subscribers named Eric sent me these pictures. This is a Walther PP. This time it is in 22 caliber. You can see the right hand side. And then we flip it over and you can see the left hand side. And you notice that it's got a, a it's a 22 inch, well you can see it in the logo, but also the way the, the slide is contoured. And this one happens to have a box magazine, which was fairly rare, but it just gave a little more room for the gripping of the gun. So for example, this one has the finger extension, uh, but they also have a, a bigger one and just, it helps with the grip. It doesn't hold any extra rounds. But anyway, this one is in 22 caliber. And then when we look at the grip strap, you can see once again, the marking is removed. Now this one uh, was in Germany uh, and Eric sent me the pictures and said, what do you think the marking was underneath? So once again, I went to my database and we found a group here is the serial numbers. There were three of them that all fell in the same range as this one. And every one of them was marked on the grip strap, SA group sued West. So instead of district or area of Mitta, uh, this one is sued West, which I believe is Southwest. So it's the area of Southwest Germany. And it had this marking, well, here's, here's the gun that I found in the safe. You can see that, I'll come, come up here a little bit. You can see it's a beautiful gun. You can see the same contour for a 22 caliber. Don't want to point it at you, but you can see the smaller caliber. This is a 22 caliber and it is marked right there on the, on the slide legend. We take out the magazine and you can see it is a 22 caliber magazine. Now, one of the uh, discussions I had at the show, somebody asked about why did they get the 22 calibers? Was it because it had less uh, kick? Uh, they did a lot of target shooting, they did a lot of target practice, and they had competitions, and uh, most of those were done with 22 calibers. It was cheaper to practice with that and do target shooting with 22 calibers. So the 22 caliber is much less rare among the SA groups. So that makes this gun, and thus the one that Eric has, uh, a little more expensive. And then we can see the front strap, but you can see that it is SA 
group sued West, and that is the same marking that would have been found on the one that Eric sent to us. Just a beautiful example, and fortunately I had one in the safe and could solve another mystery. Also, walking the show, I didn't see a single SA gun. I used to attend the Louisville show and would always find some pretty rare guns, such as an engraved gun or a party leader or some SA guns or SA full rigs. And I can remember going to shows where there would be maybe five or six at the show. I walked the, uh, most of the show and my colleagues walked the entire show. We did not see a single SA gun. We did see one party leader, but it was reproduction grips. And I heard about another party leader, but it was never put out on the table. So all of that is to say these guns are becoming rarer and rarer and harder to find. Uh, collectors are really holding on to some of the best stuff. Of course, we at Legacy, we try to source uh, good collectibles for you and make them available to you when we can. Uh, thanks for watching and hope you enjoyed this update. And stay tuned because coming up next is what did I get at the show of shows?